Headphones Neil Reviews. I'm your host, as always, Headphones Neil, bringing you my latest set of reviews, uh, mostly the usual stuff, and then round out one gameplay and start up another. So, uh, with that being said, I'm going to jump into a couple of movie reviews. Um, I saw one while browsing around on Amazon Prime uh, called The Mummy Tomb of the Dragon Emperor the from the trilogy of mummy films with Brandon Fraser. Um, I realized that I'd never actually gotten around to watching it so I thought I'd fix that and see how it is. And overall I want to say that it wasn't a terrible film. It kind of follows the same formula as the first two films but there were signs as far as why it didn't do as well as the other so when you start off with replacing your lead actress um, who plays Evie with another actress they did address it in the film um, but when you replace the main actress from the first two films you know that's a sign that um, not necessarily that it's gonna go bad but you know if you can't sign her on to the film then there may be something a reason for that whether it's uh, scheduling conflicts, bad script, or that she doesn't want to do it, stuff like that. Um, and then they kind of fix the CGI effects as far as um, Jet Li's character goes compared to Scorpion King, but it was still pretty noticeable, so it's not necessarily, necessarily a positive or negative, but the main thing that did it for me was that it just generally felt like the actors were phoning it in. It wasn't necessarily, like I really couldn't get behind them and you know they were kind of doing it just for a paycheck and to have fun, but it didn't really have the same spark and magic as the first two films. I mean, even for me, like I did like the second film with the Scorpion King and the Rock and all that, you know, CGI aside, but I the their hearts were in it and overall it was still a good film along the lines of the first one. So for me, um, if you're a completionist and still haven't seen it, I would say watch it just to round out the trilogy, but um, overall, I'd give it a 50% grade. Um, I would say watch it to complete the trilogy, but don't watch it just because it's not really good. I mean, if you enjoyed the first film, then um, kind of stop. You don't necessarily have to stop there. You can watch the second one, but the third one doesn't necessarily um, add to the trilogy of films. I mean, you're... You are adding a new location, but then it's like it looks like they were trying to set up for a whole, uh, further series, but it did so bad that they didn't continue. So, um, basically, from there, like that's kind of all you, all I can say about it. I mean, it was fine; it was entertaining enough, but um, it didn't. Uh, it's hard to say one way or another to watch it or not watch it. Um, but on the flip side, I had a chance to finally watch Alien Romulus, and this film was a pretty decent film, um, especially since it was set between Alien and Aliens. Um, they kept the look and feel of the first set of films, so as far as the spaceships and the um, um, overall look and feel and aesthetics and um, stuff like that, and then they did kind of bring in the um like this pods that you saw that we see in prometheus and stuff like that so they kept the overall look and feel consistent with other films but the only problem i had was that it felt very much like a modernization remake um there's too much borrowed from the first film to the point where it was kind of trying to in an effort to not be the first film it was basically the first film um so which isn't terrible just because they did this well enough but they tried to make it a story where they're dealing with the fallout and effects of that first film but then they were doing it like 70 years later which was kind of weird so not a terrible film overall it was well done um but then they ended it kind of the same way as the first film i think which had the ending by sigourney weaver so not terrible but i kind of now want to see a film called 
Alien Remus um, to round out what they t had in the beginning of the film of Romulus and Remus just to see where they take it or if they make another film where they connect this film to Aliens just to tie that out and tie it together and then it would make, kind of make it a good set of four films to fill in that time frame between Alien and Aliens. Um, so as far as this film goes, I give it about an 85%. Overall it was good, but because it was too similar to Alien, um, it's, that kind of takes away from it because now I'm sitting there comparing this film to the first film that started it all. So, But like I said, not a terrible film. The aesthetics were good. The cameo appearance by that robot guy was good. Um, and overall, didn't think anything was terrible. I liked the whole thing with upgrading the Android with the neural interface to repair him and having it overwrite his AI and all that. So um, definitely good stuff there. Um, as far as Walking Dead and Penguin goes, they're continuing to be good shows. Um, we now have Daryl ready to, and uh, Lauren ready to go back to the U.S. with Carol, but then now that they're back with Ash and he's upset now that he knows that Carol deceived him, he's not going to take anything back uh, or everyone back. He's only going to take three of them, but near as I can tell, it looks like Laurent is not going to make it just based on the preview of the following week. But we'll see how that all plays out if maybe, you know, Ash doesn't make it and then Carol, Daryl, and Laurent go back and he's Laurent's in hiding or stuff like that. But uh, not much to say there. Overall, good uh, continuation of the story. And then same thing with Penguin. Um, overall, continuation of the, a good continuation of the story with him establishing his foothold with the drug trade and all his underbosses and all that so I can't wait to see how the fallout goes with that and then I'll have my final review on that once the season finale hits I forget if it's next week or the week after but um or the next episode or like how many episodes there are but um all in all it's a very good show I definitely recommend it and I do still kind of hope we do have a Batman appearance at some point in the show um, and then as far as Real Coaster goes, I'm still continuing to play that, uploading those um, gameplay videos. There's not really much to say there. It's kind of just the same of upgrading each level. You get a different theme, different, slightly different roller coasters and themed coasters and all that to upgrade them and build them up. So um, we'll see if something changes eventually, but so far it's pretty much just build your park, upgrade the rides, and unlock stuff in order to get enough hearts to progress to the next level. Um, but as far as the review for the week, I had a chance to finish playing Doom 3, a uh, Doom 2 mod, and overall it was a fun experience. Um, I enjoyed playing it for the most part. Um, as it turns out though, there were a couple of um, updates released for the mod that fixes the ammunition issue and the um, enemy issue, just because in the early part of the game there was very little ammunition drop. So the developer um, fixed that as far as uh, reallocating that and making it a little bit more even so you get more ammo in the beginning. And same thing with the monsters, the distribution was kind of uneven even on the easier level so that um, difficulty has been fixed so regardless of the um, Difficulty setting it should be more in line with the expected difficulty of each mode So if you're on the easier levels It should actually be easier and the monsters should be better distributed and you should be able to get more ammo and health packs And things like that. So in my gameplay, I was playing the original version So it's kind of all out of whack and all over the place. So even on the easiest level um, There's a lot of monsters sometimes it's like well, how is this easy? It, it seems kind of hard to pass if there's this many enemies, so um, definitely something to consider. So definitely, if you have not started the game, then um, I recommend um, using one of the fixed um, gameplay or fixed mods just so you have um, all that handy. If you already started playing the game, it does mention that. Um, you are unable to transition the save games between um, um, updates. So if you're on one version, keep playing that and finish the game on um, that particular mod. So uh, keep that in mind if you see an update that um, you won't be able to transfer your save games. 
Um, but overall, like I said, good visuals, good time. Uh, some of the levels do get really, really long later in the mod, so um, keep that in mind when you're playing it that you are going to have some really long levels, but that's mostly because there is a lot of transition and going between um, um, like areas in the map that can, like kind of connect to each other. To, you have to go back and forth a lot and um, to finish the level. So that's but the development is good so it's overall worth playing um so to round it out i am starting my next gameplay of a new mod called ev eternity 2 the sequel to ev eternity so i'm going to continue that much like usual uh, no nothing to note yet so depending on when you hear this episode i'll be one or two levels in so the prologue and the first level after that so look out for the usual gameplay episodes and preview videos um, of each level so you can kind of get an idea of what to look for on each uh, gameplay video. So that's all there is for this particular episode. So if you have any questions, comments, feedback, or anything like that, you can comment on the post by visiting the social media sites. Everything's linked on the website at headphonesneal.reviews. Uh, the YouTube channel for gameplay videos is youtube.com slash pateln01. And of course, the Patreon is patreon.com slash pateln01 for early access, happy version of the podcast, a link to the video version, and all of that good stuff. But that's all there is for this particular episode. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time.